First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. Say abound more and more. Just as you received from us how you ought to walk and please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner because the Lord is, an, is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write you, because you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brothers who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, say increase more and more. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we have commanded you. That you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Say, lack nothing. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. The only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That precious name, the, the mediator between you and us, the man, Christ Jesus. Father, we just pray, Lord, as we crack open this first letter, to the Thessalonians, that you would lead us today and guide us, Lord God, so that we might be able to abound more and more, that we might increase more and more, and that we might lack nothing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Sister West, and God bless you for your ministry, for your testimony. You know, God can make a way when it seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see, and he can make a way for me. We got to believe that today because there's somebody here that's going through that needs to hear that. And if you don't hear anything else, hear that your heavenly father cares about you, that he's concerned about you, but you need to get yourself into position to receive his blessing. Paul writes, verse 1, Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort you in the Lord Jesus Christ that you should abound more and more. And that's the, that's, the, that's the first goal, to abound more and more, just as you have received from us how you ought to walk to please God. That's the ultimate goal, to please God. But first, let's talk about abounding more and more. When we say abound, what that means is we are to accelerate. We are to overflow. We are to step on the gas in our spiritual walk with God. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I have the tendency to push the envelope a little bit. Anybody who really knows me knows that I can be a little bit 
over the top. I remember um, years ago, uh, it was back around 1985, 86, me and Elder Bowles, we went to our first pastor's conference. We went to the Moody's pastor conference in, um, in Chicago, Illinois. And so we took a trip from Youngstown to Chicago. Our pastor was already there, and we, to be honest with you, were running late for the conference. We had a five to six hour journey in order to make it to the conference. But the cool thing was, is that Terry just, he bought, just bought a brand new red uh, uh, Thunderbird. Okay. Now I, I don't know. I don't know where Terry was working. Terry was like Tommy on the Martin Show. You know, <laughs> he always had all this stuff, but he ain't had no job. I, I, don't, I don't know where Terry was working with whatever. But he had this brand new. He had this brand new Thunderbird, and so we hopped into the T-Bird and we got on our way. And I was determined to make it up to Chicago in four hours in that brand new um, Thunderbird. So Terry, I knew where we were going. I knew uh, 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 Chicago. And so uh, Terry drove for a little while and the speed limit was 55 miles an hour back in those days. And, and, um, and, and so, and Terry was doing about 70. And, and so I began to be a little bit, uh, 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 I don't know, irritated, okay? At how slow he was driving. <laughs> And so I, he let me take over. And, and I told him, as I was taking over the wheel, I began to explain to Terry. I said, I say, Terry, this is a road car. Okay, this car is made, it is designed, it ain't designed to go all slow. You got to push this car. This car was made for the road. So, so I took it 90 all the way in. I, I was young back in those days. I don't do 90 anymore. Uh, I, I, I don't even, you know, I don't do, I do maybe four over the speed limit. That's about as much as I ever do today. But back in those days, we were a little wild, a little crazy. And, and so, you know, it, it, but that car was built for speed, and it didn't make any sense to my young 23-year-old mind that we would be going that slow in a car this nice. You know, we had the CB radio so that, we could, so that we could hear if the police was up the street. We had the radar, everything. We had all the equipment. We had the big engine under the hood. We had all those things, but we was just going 70 miles an hour. You didn't need none of that to go 70. Yeah, so we, we always remember, we, we talk to each other, we laugh and chuckle even today, say, yeah, this is a road car. He got him a new, he got a red Mustang now. I say, yeah, this is a road car right here, Terry. He say, yeah, I know, that's a road car. But we, we old now, so we drive real slow <laughs> in, in, in our cars today. But the same is in the Christian life. Listen, you were built for speed. You were built to get down the road, okay? You were built to not just be where you are, the goal is Christ-likeness. And we have quite, if, if you admit, like I do, we have quite a bit to go before we're like Jesus. So we need to not be satisfied where we are at a gas station or at a rest stop. We need to hit the gas, okay, and get on down the road. We have some place that we need to be. We need to be like Jesus. We need to live lives that more and more abound to please God. You see, there are benefits to pleasing God and getting down the road. See, listen here. Some of you, you're doing very well because you're sitting here in church today and you used to didn't attend church. I know that's bad language. You used to, let me phrase that. Let me conjugate that verb right. You used to not didn't go to church. <laughs> Okay, and now you're here, okay, and, 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 you, and you attend regularly, okay, praise the Lord. You know, we, we, we praise God for that, but we don't stop there. 
okay? You need to hit the gas, and now you need to start going to some growth groups. Now you need to start coming to Wednesday night, okay? Because the word you get here, okay, is not enough to take you all through the week, okay? You need to start a personal devotion where you're getting into God's word every day. Take 15 minutes. You know how long it takes to read the whole book? the whole book of 1 Thessalonians, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to read the whole book. But yet many of us sitting here have not read a whole book of the Bible through in one sitting before. But most of the books of the New Testament are designed to be read in one sitting. Okay, so you can have 15 minutes with the Lord every morning praying and getting into the word. He wants you to hit the gas on this thing. You see, you need to touch. See, some of you, you, you give, okay, and, it, and it's a blessing to you. You give and, and, and you, you have an offering, but, but you need to accelerate to being a tither. You see, some of you are tithers, and you need to accelerate to be doing a tithe and offering. Why? In order to please God. You see, so, some people, you know the gospel because we share the gospel with you all the time. We taught you the gospel earlier this year, but now that you know the gospel, that's great. But now it's time to share it with your friends. Share it with Pookie and them and your family, your little cousins, okay, and, and, and all the people in the family so that they might come to know the God that you have come to know and to love. We need to hit the Gas. That's what Paul is saying. He says, he said that you would, should abound more and more so that you can please God. And pleasing God, see, God's pleasure produces God's favor. Okay? God's pleasure, when God is pleased with you, okay, it, it produces his favor on your life. And how many know that you need God's favor more than you need anything? You see, God's favor is more important than money. God's favor is more important than a relationship. God's favor is more important than fulfilling your dreams because it is through the favor of God that dreams are fulfilled. You see, we know that God's favor sometimes is unmerited, and we call that grace. But there is a conditional favor that God responds to our obedience. There are some things, in other words, that you will not receive from the Lord until you please him through your actions. Okay, yeah, there's grace. There's stuff that you don't have to earn. You don't have to earn salvation, okay? But there are certain things in life that you will not receive until your life pleases God through your actions. See, Enoch walked with God. And therefore, because his walk with God was so close, he didn't even see death. But he was translated into heaven. Noah was a man righteous. He did righteous deeds in his generation, and God saved him from destruction. Abraham obeyed God by leaving Ur of the Chaldeans into the land that God promised him. Okay, Jacob was blessed by God because he wrestled with the angel and would not let God go until he was blessed. That's how close God wants you to be with him. How many people have wrestled with God one time through the night and said, Lord, I won't let you go till you bless me? Guess what? Sometimes he won't bless you till you won't let him go. You see, Rahab, she helped the two spies, and her deeds pleased God, and, and she, was, she had an inheritance with Israel. David was a man after God's own heart. He pursued God hard, and therefore he had special favor with God. Daniel refused to eat the portion of the king's table and, and therefore received favor of the Lord. Even Jesus... If you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says that even Jesus had to hit the accelerator. It says, Jesus, what? Increased in wisdom and stature, and he increased in favor with God and with men. 
So if Jesus had to hit the accelerator, okay, you have to hit the accelerator. That's what I want. Okay, on top of all the benefits that we get in this life, even when we go to the next life, if you please God, what I want to hear him say is, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. I want to hit the gas. But while you're hitting the gas, and you're going 90 down the freeway like I used to do, it becomes paramount to know when to hit the brakes. Okay, so, so we got verse 2. Okay, it says, For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord. Okay, for this is the will of God. Your sanctification. Say your sanctification. There are a lot of ideas of what causes sanctification and what you need to do in order to be sanctified. But Paul says this is the number one issue of Christian sanctification. Your number one duty in being set apart from, for God is to be set apart sexually. Okay, I'm going to let that settle in because we in church and, 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 um, and y'all didn't y'all, y'all think we'd be talking about sex in church. Okay, you, you didn't think I'd be digging into your business that deep. Okay, yeah, I'm digging deep today. Okay, for this is all over, you're going to be like, wow, he, he, dug, he was all up in my stuff today. Okay, is it, it's, listen, you need to learn how to pump the brakes on sexual immorality. You see, it says this in verse 2. You know what commandments we gave you through the Lord. This is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. We, we describe what sexual immorality, what pornea was a couple of weeks ago. It is any sexual activity outside of the bond of marriage, marriage being defined as between a man and a woman. Okay, anything else is sexual immorality. Okay. That each of you should know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and in honor. Not in the passion of lust like folks that don't know God. It's a difference. The, one of the main behavioral differences in somebody that knows God and the way they should act and somebody that doesn't know God is not necessarily how the way you wear, the way you wear your hair or, 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 or what you put on your face or what you wear on your ears or any of those things. It's how are you handling yourself sexually? Do you know how to possess your vessel in honor or do you give yourself a way to dishonor sexually and by the way note notice the wording here it says learn how to handle your vessel in honor you should know there is a knowledge in how to possess your you can't just do this on your own without specialized knowledge and I'm about to lay down the knowledge for you right now Okay, the first thing you need to do while you're speeding down the highway, okay, you need to check your surface and know how slick, what kind of slick road you're on. Do you have traction or not? Okay, because you'll accidentally slip into something on accident. If you don't know you're on a slick road. If you don't know it's, it's ice on the road, you'll, you'll just be at a party, you'll be at a wedding reception, and whoop, uh-oh, I done slipped into something. Now, don't raise your hand, but how many have slipped into something before? You, 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 wasn't, you, you didn't leave the house planning on it, okay? You just slipped into it. Okay, but guess what? That's, that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. You got to learn how to pump your brakes when you're on slippery ground. Okay? And it starts with your eyes. It starts with your eyes. Okay? It, it doesn't start with the vocalization. It doesn't start off with a hug. It doesn't start off with a kiss. Okay? It doesn't start off with a pet. Okay? It starts off with your eyes. 
Okay, where have your eyes been previously in the days and weeks and months between your dates? I'm talking to single folks first. Can I talk to the single people? We got anybody single here today? Okay, I want to talk to you first. Okay, all this go for married people double. Okay, because by the way, when it comes to sexual immorality, you would think that the problem is with the single, but the problem is it, it, it drags over from, from the time that you were single, okay, into the time you get married. Nothing really changes, okay, between when you say I do before. See, the person you were when you were single is going to pretty much be the person you are when you're married if you don't interject the principles of God into your situation. Okay, so if you could not contain yourself as a single, just because you're married doesn't mean that you're going to contain yourself now that you have a legitimate partner because it's about greed, not need most of the time anyway. See, mo most of the time it's about, especially I'm talking to the brothers right now. See, it's not about need, it's about variety. I'm going to let that soak in. Because y'all don't, don't even believe I said that. You see, it, it, it ain't nothing personal, it's just about variety. Okay, so you, and, and the reason why you feel that you need variety is because you're looking at variety all day long. See, it starts with your eyes. You see, first, this, this is a pattern. I, I've talked to you about it before. See, first you start to peek. Okay, you, you peek. Okay, you just peek. You're not, no harm, just a little peek. You think it's not harmful, just that little peek. Okay, and then you start to sneak. Okay, you know you're not supposed to be doing it because you're, you're, you're saved. You're a Christian. Okay, so you start, you start to sneak. Okay, and then you go from sneak to be the freak of the week. <laughs> Big old freak. You turn it all in out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't think I don't know. Believe me, I deal with it too. If I, I got to watch what I watch, it is important to watch what you watch. Because listen here, there is, and I hate to use this terminology because I'm not talking about any individual, but there is a skank spirit in this world today. It is, there is a spirit of skankness. That is now operating in this world. Okay, listen, listen. Look, sometimes I'm flipping around on, on, on the television, okay, and, and I watch, you know, I, I, don't, I don't watch it, you know, but I, I'll stop to see what's going on, and I'll watch one of those shows that's it's the wives of this or that. You know, these are, these are wealthy people, people who should be role models, people who are role models, okay? They're, they're people that people we admire and wish they were them, okay? Skank! You, you can't even watch it. It makes your stomach turn. It makes my stomach turn and say, why are these people doing, why are they acting like that? Why, why are they, why, these are grown women fighting like that? You know, it's something a little, and, and, we, and we got our young girls watching, they think they're supposed to be fighting all that. The, the, the spirit, the, the, spirit, the, the, the clothing and, and, and all this stuff that, that people, it, it is, listen. Your sanctification, okay, is, is a lack of sanctification. <laughs> and I'm talking about men, I'm talking about women, I'm talking about because, you know, the brothers, you know, you, listen, the, the reason why I talk about the, the, that particular show, you can almost, you know that men are going to be skanked. And stank. You know that your society has gone downhill when ladies join that party. And they don't even give the appearance of, 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 of class. 
You see, you have to, we have to watch men, we have to watch ladies, what we are watching, okay? And then we need to watch where we're walking, okay? L listen, you can't put yourself in a position to where you'll get into a heated situation. Come on, guys. Listen, go out on a date. Get to know one another, okay? Really get to know one another. Don't play the game. You know what the game is? The game is how long is it going to take me to get you to bed? That's the game. Don't act like you don't know. That's the game. Okay, it, you might not be playing that game, but, but it, chances are most of the folks that you're running into are playing that game. Okay, you don't need to be involved in that game. Now, get to know a person. Go out to dinner. Have a movie. Then go home by yourself. <laughs> by yourself. Because now it's 12 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay, well, let's go home and, and watch a movie, okay, and have a drink. Okay, Christian people, I'm talking about Christian people. Okay, L listen, first of all, you're tired, okay, and you're having a drink, and you're watching a movie, okay, with some, l listen, it, it, come on, c how, much, how much of your defenses do you need broke down before you slip? And then if you slip enough, okay, you, you, you're, you're just all out there and your testimony is all shot. Okay? You know, you, you, and let me just share this. This is, this is a freebie for you, too. If you do slip, there's forgiveness. Okay? But there are also sometimes consequences. Okay? And sometimes that consequence is a pregnancy. Okay? And, and, and by the way, good people, good girls get pregnant. Okay? They, they get pregnant more than bad girls. Okay? Because they wasn't expecting what bad girls are expecting, so bad girls get prepared. Okay? I'm, I'm just going to break it down. I don't know why I broke it. Listen. Please hear me. The baby isn't the sin. People come to me and say, say will, will you dedicate my baby? I, I had the baby. I, well, of course I'm going to dedicate your baby. You better bring that baby over here to me and let me dedicate that baby. The baby is not, is not the issue. Okay, the baby just says you busted. <laughs> you know, that, that's all. Uh, but the baby came directly from God. The baby came from God. You did your thing, and God did his thing. And he brought this baby in, in, into this world. Okay, listen to me, church, please. Parents, listen to me, as well as children. Okay? You are not allowed to abort that child. I, I, need, I need to make this clear. Abortion is the, is the most evil thing in this world. There is nothing more evil than abortion. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Listen, you are Christians. You are saints of the most high God. You are not a gangster. You do not whack people that get in your way. You don't put a hit out on a child because that child might get in your way. That, that's not who you are. That's not who we are. Deal with the, deal with the consequence, and it's a blessing. It's, it's a blessing from God. That child, you're going to love that child to death, okay? Listen, we don't, we don't do those types of things. That, that you may have used to be a gangster, but you're not a gangster right now. And even gangsters don't kill their own children. 
You know, this, this is a racket, folks, and we're falling into it. In the, I know we're in mixed company, but let me just lay it down. One-third of all black pregnancies end in abortion. One-third. If we had not, if abortion was not legal, the black population in America would be around 20 to 25 percent of the population, not 12 percent. And by the way, 80%, Planned Parenthood is the biggest aborter in the country, okay? 80% of Planned Parenthood clinics are in black communities. And we are 12% of the population. You don't think there's a conspiracy? There is a racist conspiracy to abort black babies. Do not let these evil, murderous racists dupe you into thinking that this is a viable option okay. for your life. I hope that wasn't too hard. No, 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 seriously, I, 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 want, I, want to be, I just want to be clear, okay? This is not a woman's health issue. I can't even see how they can choke that. Only a politician can, can even let that type of spin sp slip out of their mind. It has nothing to do with women's health. It has to do with a life of a real live human being. If you have participated in that, there's forgiveness of your sin, for your sin. God will forgive you all the way. Okay? But what, who I'm talking to, I'm not, the people who've done it in the past... Okay, listen, it's in the past, okay? Plead the blood over that, okay? The blood will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You, you are thoroughly clean from that, okay? I'm talking about moving forward, you guys. Okay, this is a serious matter. It causes life. We need to not take this as some type of poultry trivial type of thing like it's some type of choice that you really have to make it is not your choice okay there's no it's no difference between a child in the womb and a child that you bring home from the hospital there's absolutely no difference in the sight of god okay okay so so let, let's move on it says Verse, I mean, verse um, nine. But con considering brotherly love, you have no need that I should write you, for you, you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. What is love? Love is you thinking and seeking someone else's higher interest. Okay, you are a person that loves another person wants them to win as much as they want to win themselves. That's what love is. Okay, love is not a love is not a mushy feeling necessarily. It's not any of that. It's when we have interaction, and you express to me a concern. I have in mind your highest good even like I have my own highest good in mind, okay? Love is the fuel of your Christian life. Love is, is the nitrous oxide of your supercharged engine, okay? If you don't know what else to do to get ahead, okay? If you feel like you're stuck, if you're in a rut, okay, just start loving the people around you more. Okay, it will boost you into hyper overdrive. Just start loving everybody around you. See, because when we start getting depressed, when we start getting off into ourselves, when we start having a woe is me, I feel sorry for myself attitude, it's because you're not doing what you were designed to do. You weren't designed to be self-consumed. You were designed to love somebody. Okay, so look around you. See who it is to love. Okay, uh, it, says, it says this. Verse 11. 
it says that you aspire also to live a quiet life and to mind your own business. Okay, that's another thing, okay, is, is this. We got in the church, we got police in the church. We got fashion police in the church. You know, don't, don't let nobody come in here with their pants sagging down or whatever. You know, that's, a, you know, that's just, we got fashion police in here. Okay, you know, don't, don't let nobody come, don't, don't, we, we have, um, we have, uh, um, uh, uh, we have, in, in, your, in your neighborhoods, we have uh, yard police. Okay, folks looking around and saying, you know, look at their yard. They don't keep their yard up nice or whatever, you know. It, it, it's a judgmental attitude that you're always looking over your shoulder. And, and by the way, you've been blessed to keep things in a particular way. But listen here. Your personal pet peeves and your personal likes, dislikes, and all those kinds of things, guess what? They're yours. They're your gift from God to you. God, God has blessed you to, to have, you know, this high taste. Okay, and, and, and these high, by the way, none of these are sin issues that we're dealing with. They're just things that you think should be or not be, and you're walking around, and, and you'll put on, see, the, the problem is, is if you keep it in your mind, it's great, okay? You're allowed to have all these opinions that you want to have, but what we do is we turn on the flashers, okay, and, and, and we pull people over, okay? <laughs> And, and, and the people we pull over, this is the killer. This is what Paul's talking about. The people we pull over is not the people that's committing the offense. They're our gossip buddies. And we put on the flashes, and we don't talk, we're not talking directly to the people. We're talking to our friends about how so-and-so look, what so-and-so was going to eat, what so-and-so was, uh, uh, you know, what, 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 whatever, how they wore their hair. You know, you need to comb, you know, how to keep their children. You need to comb that child hair before you bring them out of the child. You know, you need to do it, you know, and, 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 and you're gossiping. Okay, by the way, that's part of that stank culture. Gossip, 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 for real. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Gossip, gossip. See, that's why they, that's why they, be, why they, why they fight so much on the housewives of this and that. Because of gossip. Okay, Go man, that, that's, that's part of that, that, that spirit that exists in the world today. I was talking to the young people a, a, a couple of years ago, and, and, and one of them told me, they say, Pastor, you was talking to us about gossip, but, but I, I, got, I got a confession to make. That's my favorite activity. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I would do if I couldn't gossip. Okay, listen, church. There is more to be said in the Bible about gossip Okay, than it is about drinking, smoking, or cussing. Together, combined. Combined. Okay, you crush and destroy people by your gossip. Okay, Paul says you should live a quiet life. What it means is not that you're a quiet person, not that you don't make an impact. It means that you're quiet when it comes to gossip. Because you're minding your own business. Because guess what? You got enough stuff to worry about with yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, believe it or not, and this, this is going to hurt somebody's feelings. It's going to hurt about 25% of your feelings. Okay? L listen, you're not perfect either. And you know what, what I found out about people who are highly prone to gossip, gossiping, okay? They have the most tender hearts, and, and, and they are hurt worse when somebody else is gossiping about them than anybody else. Now, person, person that's not my area of, of, of struggle. I don't have a problem. I don't, I don't have a problem. I, I don't gossip about people, okay? I, I, don't, I don't do that. That's not one of my things that I do. And, and the, the, the funny thing is, is I don't care if you gossip about me. 
You know, somebody can say, you know, Pastor Rice, so and so said something about you. I said, I, I, it'll, it'll probably crack me up. I could care less. It doesn't make me any difference. Because I don't judge people and I don't care if they judge me. You can't do, you can't do what I do if you care. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not, see, so, but, but, but the funny thing is, is people that are heavy gossipers, they're also very sensitive to the gossip of others, okay? You need to switch that, stop gossiping about other people, then you can have time to work on yourself, so when somebody else says something about you, okay, guess what? It doesn't affect you that greatly. See, see what, what, what happens is sometimes we're deflecting stuff we should be dealing with and by dealing with other folks' stuff because it's easier. I'm going to repeat that one more time. Aspire to live a quiet life, to mind your own business. Check this out. And to work with your hands, okay? What that means is get a job, Tommy. Get a job. It doesn't have to be a great job. It just needs to be any job sometimes. And God will provide your need with a little bit of money, okay? Way more. He got more to work with than if you wasn't bringing in no money. Okay? You see, he can give you a promotion once you get started on a job. Okay? And he said, check this out. It says, it says, that you might learn to walk properly. No, no, no. As we have commanded you, work with your own hand as we have commanded you. Okay? What did they command you? Do everything, everything you do in word and deed, do heartily as unto the Lord. That's how you do it. So, whatever job you're on, work it like it's the most important job in the universe. Okay? That's how God is going to provide for your needs. Don't shirk, don't slack, okay? Don't spend all day surfing the net. Work conscientiously as unto the Lord. Then it says that you might walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Lack nothing. Wouldn't it be great to live a life where you lack nothing? You see, in order to lack nothing, you need to have favor. You need to have favor. You know, I'm going to close with this story. I had the privilege back in the 90s, mid-90s, um, to sing in this choir um, with this organization called Promise Keepers. Promise Keepers was the biggest, largest men's movement ever in the history of the world. And they would do these huge, um, 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 I don't know what you call them, crusades. And um, one time we went to Washington, D.C., and there were literally a million men on the plaza, okay, in, in, in 1993. They came to Dallas several times. One year they were at Texas Stadium, the old Texas Stadium. Okay, and I was part of a 200-voice choir that was um, um, sung, we sang with a, a lot of different great artists. Um, Ron Cannoli was one of, you know, the, uh, I saw the Lord seated on the throne. That, that was a Promise Keeper song by Ron Cannoli, okay? And, and we were in the choir, and we had all these rehearsals leading up to this. And then on the big day, we sang before eight thousand men 80,000 men and it was it was just a cool experience Texas stadiums full to the rafter with men praising God holy hands lifted up to the Lord and that was the cool spiritual part but the cool carnal part was this was for singing out because I was part of the program I got a special all-access pass that I got to wear. And where all the other brothers had to pay to get in, I had favor. 
okay? So I could just walk into, I didn't have to stand in line. Sometimes the line getting in, it was, it was a quarter mile long just to get into the stadium. They had a special entrance that I could go in. And I was walking past all these guys. I said, I said, nah, 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 nah. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I was, and I was walking in, you know, and I, and I just showed them my pass at the door and they let me in. And so I did my rehearsals and stuff, and, and we sang before the men, and, and then, you know, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have any money hardly back in the 90s, you know, but I didn't need any money because uh, um, um, they had concessions there, and, but I didn't have to go to the concession line because they had a special dining room for the VIPs, and they had food on China back there at this particular place. And they have people that actually serve you a place. So I would show my pass and I'd go back there and I'd be back there, Tony Evans and, 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 and um, 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 Franklin Graham and, you know, all these great men of God. And we were just eating together and, you know, just, just kind of uh, um, chewing the fat. And it was cool. And then, then I actually, you know, I always wanted to go into a skybox. But that section had a guard and it was roped off. But I went up to the guard, and I showed him my pass, and he let me up on the escalator to go to the skyboxes. So after I finished singing and finished eating, and, and then I went up to the skybox, and they had food up there too. And it was because I was connected to the program. You see, when you connect to the program of God, you connect to the favor of God, and there are perks that go with that favor, okay? It doesn't matter how much money you had, you could not buy one of these passes. And see, some of you think that you, have, that you need more money in your life, but that's not the antidote to your problem. You need more favor. You see... See, so, so, some of you think that you need to lose more weight to get that special sum. No, you don't need to necessarily lose no weight. Okay, you just need favor. See, you don't need to be more beautiful. You don't need more makeup. See, you don't, you don't need to put the Mac Connor out of business. <laughs> Okay, and, and, and by, you know, it, it, uh, what, what you need. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm not telling you, Felicia. I'm just talking about what, what you need. What you need is favor. You need favor. You say, well, well you know what? It's, 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 no, it's hardly no men in the church. You don't, need, you don't need a lot of men. You don't need one. You see, and you just need the favor to open up that door. You see, li listen, favor is more, is more essential than degrees. It's more essential than station in life. Okay, it's more than political power or anything else. You need the favor of the Lord. In order to get the favor of the Lord, you need to connect to the program of God so that God can then dish out to you that which you need to accomplish what concerns you. Let's pray. Father, we just love you today. And we thank you and praise you, Lord God. And as we journey through the rest of, of this book, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you would.